Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So we have our edit uh, course here. Your course was created successfully, which is nice. But we need uh, to be able to uh, get back to the edit process whenever we want. So this will be our edit process. We just haven't added anything yet. But let's go back for a moment to courses here and finish a few other things. So first of all, let's fix the problem we had previously. So I'm going to click on new course to create another one. And then I will select one of these guys and hit save. And as you can see, it doesn't show me the course that I had selected before. So let's fix that with a function. So we go to functions and we're going to have this uh, similar set value, but we'll create a different one called set select. Set select like that. Okay, so back to courses here. I will put exactly set select here. Let me do that and say set underscore select uh, like, like that and close that up. So there should be spaces here and a space there because we wanted to echo the word select if this is the option that was selected. So in order to know if it's the one, we have to put its value here. First of all, we name the column name and this one is category ID. Okay, let's give it that. Let's also give it the value which we are expecting. So all we need to do is compare this value, which this one has, to the value saved in the post variable. If they match, then we echo out the word select. It's as simple as that. But we may need a default value on this side here later, just like we added to this select, it has a default value uh, for when we are editing stuff. So I'm just going to put a comma for diff. Oh, I won't put that here because this is not an edit section, but we'll just remember to put default on the other side. So the default value will be put into consideration as well. So let's get back to set select here. It's exactly the same what we want. Uh, we have the key. Okay, that's great. If that exists, it's not empty. Let's return the key. Now, instead of returning the value, we want to compare. This is default here, but here we have the value, like so, and copy, quote. So we need the key and a value to compare. So here, if uh, this is happening, what we want is to compare and say if value is equal to the item in the post variable right now, if that's true, let's return uh, selected like that. Now we can put the spaces here just so in case you forget to put the spaces on the other side, it wouldn't hurt. Okay, and then if not empty default value, then let's compare the default value to this right there as well. So if we're in here, let's do another if statement value is equal to the default value we do exactly the same let's return selected like this like that or else we just return an empty uh, stringy like this pretty good this is all we needed so let's see if it's working now and I'm just going to uh, refresh and reset and as you can see now it says IT software Let's try a different one, design and save. You see it's refreshed, but we're still on design. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Okay, so that part is working fine. Now what we need is to read from this, uh, from the database so that we can list our courses. Yes, yes. Let's go to the database and see when we hit browse. Okay, so there's a lot of no values here that we didn't need but the rest is here. So we have a category, we have the user, we have the title, very nice. So we just need to read from the database. So we're going to go back to the admin controller. Now, all this happens in the add section, but then this happens only when we post in the add section. But we have this courses thingy here, and I want to read a few of the, of the items here from course. And uh, hmm, what to do, what to do? 
So in courses here, we want to read every course that... Um, anyway, we'll put pagination later. For now, let's do this. Uh, let's say... I'll call this one rows, like this, because we are going to get a lot of rows. Let's put course, and let's put... Use the where clause, like that. So all courses where the user ID is equal to my user ID. So since we are using the user ID, let's just move this. Instead of repeating ourselves, let's just put it right here. In fact, we may need this user ID on everything here. So let's just put it right at the top here. Okay, great. So let's copy that. And let's paste it there. So every course with my user ID should be loaded here. The order is always going to be descending order. If we go to our, um, where is this, our model.php and look at the where function itself, where are we? Yeah, it says where. It has no limit or anything like that. It doesn't even have an order here. So let's do that. I'm going to copy, uh, put a comma and put the order thingy here and say is equal to descending that's the order we are going to use cool so with that in mind we can extend to our query after we clean it up here and then the query remains there what we would do is we'll just say query dot equals meaning add to the query let's make sure we put our space there and say order by and let's use whatever order is given there um, Actually, we need a column name here, ID, and then order. So like I said previously, we will change this ID a bit later, but for now, this is fine. So this one will read order by ID descending because it's descending there. But we're putting that there as an option. In case we want to order differently, we can just put that comma and add that different order there. Okay, so we have rows right now. But rows for it to go to the view side has to be inside the data uh, array. So what we'll do is change that to data and then rows like this. Great, great. So this should do. And now we just need to go to the courses view, not the add section here because this action is equal to add. There's also edit and there's an L statement and thus this is what we want. So right here, I just want to show the table. Okay, my courses, this should show whether we have courses or not because we should be able to click new course. But the rest of the table should only show, actually the rest of the table should show as well, the titles, for example. It's the T body that should not show if there is nothing. So let's separate this a little bit and let's add an if statement here. So I'm going to put PHP tags and say if this moment if not empty rows right so if there's something inside those rows then we are in business so i'm just going to copy this and put that at the end and then move these babies inward let me duplicate this oh no 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 actually let me just copy that we want to we don't want to loop through the T body, we want to loop through the row so that we can create more rows. So I'll put another if statement there, copy that after the row, closing and if statement. Let's move everything over. And oops, wrong place to move things over. I wanted to move the content. Now let's change this if into for each. Okay, make sure you change it down here as well. So for each rows, we know the rows exist at this point. And then we'll say as a single row. Now row contains the information we want. So copy that. And right about here, we need to add stuff. So I'm going to say row and then uh, user ID, right? Because that's the username. Oh, wait, that should be the title, actually. So row title. Now, title could have some strange characters, so let's put that in a bracket and use the escape function. 
Okay, so what we have, we have the title, we have the category and the price. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's go with category here. So I'm just going to copy this and put it here. There's no need to escape this because, yeah, but who knows? I'll just leave it there. Category ID. What's the next thing? Uh, price. Hmm. These are all uh, ID things. So let me paste that and I'll say price ID. What else? Hmm. Primary subject. Yes, yes. Okay, let me paste that. I don't remember what I uh, called this one, so I'm going to just go to the course model and look at this. Uh, it's called primary subject, after all. So yes, primary subject, where is this? Right there. Primary subject, like this. And then finally, we have the date. Now in the functions, do I have a get date function yet? I, re I forget because I do a lot of these things. Nope, we do not have. Okay, so I want a human readable date. So inside functions, I'll just add a function and call it get date. And then here we will put the not so friendly date. And then for now, I'll just tell it to return the same date. We'll do something uh, very soon. Let me go back here. Let me just put date here so that you can see the difference once we do that. And then there's action. Pretty cool. So back here, and if I now refresh, I should get something, but I don't. So let's put an else here. Uh, if, let's duplicate that if. Let's put else, put full column, and then let's just echo something here and say, um, no records found, exclamation point. That way, at least, we know what's going Oh, no records from. Okay, it's up here instead of down here because it's not in a row. So, let's put table row. Close that. And, of course, we need table data. Let's close table data here. And we are good to go. Goody. Now it's in here. But it doesn't go all the way here. But how many columns do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just tell it to span 10 columns, yeah? Call span 10, like this. So that it goes all the way, there we go. So no records found, hmm, but this is not correct, is it? We do have records, so why? So we're going to go to the admin section here where we have data rows. I want to see if we're actually getting something from there. So I'm just going to try and show that. So if I inspect or view page source, you see that I have nothing there. Now, if you're seeing completely nothing, instead of using a show, let's use var dump so that it tells us that we are getting a result and if the result is just a false, like false as in true or false. So it doesn't look like we are getting anything here. And the reason is simple, I think I missed this. Uh, this is in the add action, so not really uh, the right place to put this. So what I would do is, since it seems we will need course model a whole lot more, I'm going to cut this from here and put it right there. And then cut this as well. Let's close that gap a little bit. I cut this. Okay, so we don't need this in the add action. We need it everywhere else, but so if action is equal to add, uh, let's put an else statement down here for I'll just say courses and view uh, it's it's a good idea to to put comments I forget this a lot but please put comments in your code because you get lost next time you come to check things okay so this is the right place to put that and there we go so we have our record my test course category ID and we have this not so human readable date and so let's fix a few things here real quick let me fix the date then we're going to deal with the category in the next video but for now let's fix the date 
So for the date, let's go here. And instead of using escape, let's use another function we created called get date. Let's go back to functions and instead of returning just the normal date, we're going to convert it into a different kind. So if you want to convert a date to a different format, use the function date. And then here, you put the first item as the pattern that you want to use. So small letter J, capital S, capital M, and capital Y. So this is going to be like 12th May, not May. Uh, this just represents month, depending on the month and then the year in four numbers. If I put a small letter Y, it will put two numbers. If I put a small letter M, it will put, uh, instead of February, it will put 02 or two, but the capital M will make sure it puts something like Feb, like this. If you want the whole thing like February, February, you put capital F like that and so forth. So experiment with that. You can check out uh, the date function on php.net. String to time. This is the beauty of uh, PHP. It's well documented. So I'm converting this date into, uh, um, what's this, an integer because this is what the date function requires. Okay, with that, we are good. So let's see how this date changes to something more human readable. Now, as you can see, 13th June, 2022. If you want to put time as well, you can put that in the pattern here. Just put hour, uh, minutes, and uh, seconds. So these, um, uh, these values I'm putting here are not required because as you can see, 10, 10, 20. Oh, by the way, if you want to know if it's AM or PM, just put A at the end there. It's going to show you if that's AM or PM. But if you want, you can put dashes. You can put really any character here. Uh, I can put a dash on this one like this. It will still work like that. As long as it's not one of these characters that we are using here, because if I put A there, then it's going to mean something else. It will add A M P M there in the middle, as you can see. But if I escape it with a slash like this, it will be considered a, a, a string character. So I'll, I'll have an A there instead of A M, as you can see there. So, so much you can do here. You can create sentences like January the, the second or something like that if you really want to go crazy. But this is not what I want here. So out of my way, refresh, that's all I need. Okay, so in the next video, let's make sure we can see a category name instead of just the number here. Because in the row, you can see the category is just an ID, just like user is an ID, right? So we need to find a way to get the actual content of the category and the user ID for everything that has an ID in here, the level and price as well. All right then, so let's do that in the next video.